Professor Blum, uh, you have been working your whole life for short science and have also been involved a lot in the IUSS. So we are very interested in your history and so perhaps you can tell us a little bit about your family background and your heritage. Thank you for this opportunity to talk about my person and my relationship to science and especially IUSS. My citizenship is German and Austrian and I was born as first child of seven in 1941 in Freiburg, Breisgau and uh, uh, my ancestors come mainly from Germany, France and the United States of America. Um, the, uh, my father uh, was a uh, senior civil servant and forest uh, district officer in the county of Baden-Württemberg and he had a, a master's degree from, in forestry from the University of Freiburg and my mother had uh, hold, uh, uh, held a, um, a diploma of high school so that's more or less the relationship uh, with family and, and, uh, and uh, my basic background. Mm. Now, I grew up in official residences of the forest administration in little villages or villages, in villages and uh, uh, little towns uh, in the, on the Swabian Alp, a mountain ridge uh, in southern Germany on limestone and in near the Danube region. And uh, uh, this was a very interesting experience because um, these were large, large houses and uh, in, in the basement was the office of my father and the, his staff and we had hunting dogs, dogs on this floor and we had also uh, rooms for uh, um, um, uh, preserving uh, hunting animals so it was just a, a forest <laughs> environment <laughs> and uh, this was uh, interesting because uh, my father was at the same time uh, training young forest engineers and uh, I was allowed to accompany these young people into the forest areas and uh, I remember uh, with one uh, of these young colleagues uh, I had a long discussions about soils because I had to, to, to dig soil profiles for him and to accompany him in describing these soils and I put questions forward what is this and what is that so I got to some extent acquainted to the question of soil site and also the question uh, of the forest growth on these different soil types. So this was a quite uh, interesting experience for me. I also tried as a young uh, student, a young uh, high school student to, to uh, accumulate some little money uh, to make some savings because I knew we are seven children in the end oh, <laughs> at the time and uh, uh, therefore I have to be careful they all of them want to do some studies at university so uh, I worked in the forest and I worked on construction sites wherever I could get the most of the money I went to work with <laughs> and <laughs> At the end of my uh, my uh, high school uh, studies, I had some savings for my for my uh, university for the my university studies. So, so what about your your further education and especially your university studies? Uh, in 1960, I started with forest engineering at the University of Freiburg. And uh, 
as I was interested in botany and geology and, and soils. Uh, from my background as a student at high school and at home, uh, I was able to put specific questions to the professor in the second course, in the second term and third term in basic soil science at the university, and he was quite astonished to listen to a to, to the uh, young guy uh, what he had specific questions to the pictures which he showed. Uh, on the on the screen. So he invited me, Professor Gansen, uh, to his uh, to his institute in you order know, to know more what's about uh, me. And uh, after some time, he offered me um, um, a post as lecture assistant to help him to show slides and to prepare his his um, uh, different uh, exercises in the in the. Now, through so this experience um, and my closer connection to this uh, institute and my work also with a professor, uh, he gained some information about me and uh, at the end of the fourth semester he asked me uh, suddenly if I would like to do a PhD work in his institute. And I was quite astonished, I was happy, of course, but I was quite astonished and I thought, okay, I said I need some time and finally I, I, I of course, had to accept that. And uh, this had two consequences. One consequence was that I said, with forestry studies alone, I am not able to do a, a, a PhD work in soil sciences. So I have to do more and I started, I started a second course in natural sciences with chemistry, geology, mineralogy, physiology and uh, what it else, and uh, plant physiology. And what I also did, I bought a scooter because I knew if I have to go to field work I need something for transportation because the institute had nothing to offer the university, neither. So I was uh, alone. To was uh, on my own in order to prepare all these things. And uh, this was uh, uh, quite uh, an experience. And I started my uh, PhD uh, work at the two studies. And maybe something interesting also is that um, in, in the summer, the summer term, in 62, I had to do some um, exercise, forest exercise for getting a diploma uh, 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 in order to continue my forestry studies. And I did this in Sweden. So, as I was interested, most interested at that time in frost affected soils, it was fascinating for me to see how frost is moving stones along in a certain way of thing. I said, okay, I will look at, at uh, uh, frost affected soils in the polar region of Sweden, but I could not find literature, so I learned Swedish. And I really learned Swedish and uh, I could read the Swedish information and also the Finnish information because at that time the Finns also had to publish in Swedish. So, Kayanda and so forth. So, so, this was quite an interesting experience, and I said, okay, I want to go to the, to the Hammerfest to quite to the north. And what I should do in this way? I thought, okay, I will map uh, forest ants along the horizontal way to the north, from the uh, uh, northern part of the, the Baltic Sea in Rovaniemi to. Wurzo, Ivalo, Inani, Sodankile, Wurzo to the north. And this was a fascinating experience. <laughs> and and uh, I took my scooter and went from Umeo to Gamla Kerbi to the Finnish side. Um, and there happened something quite 
specific. I, I was absolutely tired of the, the ferry boat arrived in late evening and I took my scooter and went some, some kilometers in order to put my tent somewhere. And I found a marvelous place, a little depression. I said, okay, that's fantastic. And the next morning at 6 when the sun rose up, I was bombarded by seagulls on my tent. This was a very specific place. I didn't first know what had happened. And I looked out and I saw these guys uh, jumping on my, my, my tent. So I, it took me one day to clean my tent and to bring things in order. But this was one of my first experiences. Never <laughs> use your tent in a breathing place of seagulls. Okay, so I went uh, north to the, when I left the, when I, to, when we, I left the forest zone uh, to Betula Nana zone which was fantastic, but it was September, with colored leaves, yellow, red leaves, fantastic. I was quite enthusiastic and I took nest material, I took some ants and brought them back. And what I did else, I said, I should also look into the horizontal distribution of these ants. And this I did in the Swedish Fjell region, and this was also interesting to see how how, how far these animals go uh, into the altitude, altitudes of the mountains. And this was for Mika Rufa Rufa and for Mika Aquilonia. This was a very interesting uh, experience. So I had my, my frost affected soils and my, my forest and mapping uh, exercise when I came back to Freiburg uh, University. And this was the first experience in the northern region about soils, uh, nature, uh, terrestrial ecosystems. The next experience which I had was in 65, near the end of my forestry studies, because Professor Gansen allowed me to visit, to, to expose his books uh, at the first Mediterranean conference, a conference on Mediterranean soils in Madrid. So I took my car, I had a car then, I had a, 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 a Beetle, Volkswagen Beetle, and uh, I went to Madrid and from there we had a three weeks excursion in southern Spain and Portugal with the most famous professors of soil science of, Austria, of Europe and outside, Janun, from Israel, Mancini from Italy, uh, Duchaufour from France, Vidal as director from the Soil and Water Division of FAO, and so forth, and so forth, and so and so forth. And during this excursion, they asked me to, to um, uh, chair the discussions at the profiles because I could fluently speak English and French. So this was, this was. Uh, a quite nice experience where I could learn something about subtropical soils uh, under the guidance of uh, professors, uh, high esteem uh, professors. This was the second part uh, of my, let's say, uh, professional experience. And this was quite important for the next step because in, in 68, just before I finished my PhD, I had to do soil mapping in East Africa, in Kenya, Tanzania and Uganda. And that's where tropical soils. So I had uh, also experience about subtropical soils, close to tropical soils. This was a three, a three months uh, exercise uh, financed by the German Research Foundation. So this was a little bit the background with which I started to become a professional at university. So your university activities um, are not only restricted to uh, Germany, so further on you had uh, your activities situated in Brazil. Yes, this was to some, to some extent later. Um, before I came to Brazil, uh, I, I should say that I studied also soil science in Göttingen University, Göttingen is is witty. I wanted to see this professor and learn something from him. And uh, uh, 
Dusselfour, Professor Dusselfour invited me to spend some time in his institute in Nancy and to visit the University of Nancy to study at this university. This was in 65. So this was a uh, uh, basis and uh, when I had finished my PhD in 68, I started with my habilitation and uh, within three years I was ready with this and became an associate professor uh, in early 72. And when I had this, this position, the faculty asked me to, to be a, a vice dean of the faculty and this meant at the same time that I was uh, chairman uh, of the um, German uh, Council for Forest Faculties and had to be uh, present at the rectors, German rectors. Uh, uh, assembly in Bonn, uh, Rector's Conference. So I went from Freiburg to, to Bonn and so forth and so on. Uh, and uh, there I learned something about science politics and how universities are functioning and so forth and so on the personal basis. And then in 1975, uh, after being dean of the faculty and so forth and so on, the faculty asked me to manage the university bilateral project, partnership project in Brazil. And I hesitated because I had good chances to do an interesting job as a university professor and scientist. University of Fredo, why should I go into a developing country? But they really insisted that I take this post, so I went to Brazil. Uh, in order to manage uh, the first or to, to install or to develop the first master course in forest engineering for Brazil and the whole, whole Latin America, with the exception of Chile, which has in the state of Australia and Maldivia already a faculty of forestry in this master course. It's a master course. <coughs> so I spent my time in, I was a professor and I had to really to do a lot of administrative work and also uh, to guide five different forestry areas in this bilateral project in Curitiba, it's a state state of uh, University of Paraná and I also had the chance there in Brazil I had a diplomatic passport and so forth and so on to cooperate with the responsible institutions in Brazil uh, not only the, the Agricultural Forest Research Organization in Brapa, which just started to, to build up, but also other uh, parts of the Ministry of Education and Research. And I learned a lot about I was uh, uh, responsible for the selection of students for doing PhD work abroad, for Brazilian students, and so forth and so on. So this was a very broad experience uh, which I gained. And now, uh, comes the important step forward. This was in 1977. There was a competition for the Chair of Soil Science following Professor Franz. And they took part about 18, 18 candidates, I heard afterwards, and eight people they uh, accepted for, for uh, uh, a lecture in this competition. And finally, in, in in December 70, at the, at the second Christmas day of 78, I received a letter from the Brazilian post of the Ministry of Science and Research of Austria. And I thought, oh, this, all this travel expense is not regulated yet, but it was a call from the minister uh, to, to come here to Vienna to, to be professor of this, of this chair of soil science. Uh, so I started in 79, in October 79, on this post and uh, at the same time I received the Austrian citizenship uh, because this was a formal or legally necessary uh, step to do my job at the university because examinations are official acts. So uh, examinations on universities are official acts. So, this was my start, and 
just to say that I was very happy to be from 82 to 86 president of the Austrian Soil Science Society. So I started also in, in associations and I was never president of a, of a national uh, so society. And then from 86 to, 80, to 90 I was uh, the past uh, president of, of the, this, uh, this organization. Okay, so before coming to the activities in the organizations, what would you estimate to be the most formative experiences of your life, of your professional life and your private life? I think if I take all these experiences which I just described together, I started to understand what's the importance of soil science and the management of soils was and how important it is to, to, to talk and to, to uh, 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 show this knowledge and to discuss this knowledge with other colleagues on a, on a worldwide or at least first European and a worldwide level. And so my contacts in Europe already I was asked to be advisory, member of advisory boards of Austrum, the French organization for, for science uh, in developing countries, Officier d'Outre-mer, and uh, to, today I, ER, IRD. I was a uh, member of the advisory board of ISRIC in Wageningen for many years. I was asked to chair the Commission of Experts at the Council of Europe at that time in Strasbourg uh, for soil protection and we had 36 different countries there and the discussions were only in French and, 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 and English. So this was until 94. There I, somebody came and said, could you please uh, be a member of the advisory board of the European Environment Agency? And I was from 94. 1994 to 2002, one of 15 European scientists advising the European Environment Agency in Copenhagen. This was a quite important exercise because I learned a lot from different other uh, areas. And, 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 and so besides your activities that you have told, uh, you have also been involved in other international organizations, especially the IUSS. Yeah, you have been in a very important position for several years, so perhaps you could also tell us a little bit about this. Uh, I became Secretary General of IUSS in, in the World Conference, Soils Conference in Kyoto in Japan in 1990. And uh, the, the first activity which I did in this organization uh, was to try to, f to relate this organization to a worldwide network of science organizations. This was ICSU, Paris. So uh, in 91, I attended uh, the World Conference of ICSU in Santiago de Chile and asked for acceptance of IUSS in this organization, which was uh, uh, granted. And so uh, we were in a real international organization or worldwide organization. This, for this, it was necessary to change the administrative structure of ISSS at that time because this was a structure based on individual membership. Only individual members could be member of ISSS. So I tried to bring this to a national membership of national soil science societies. And this could be concluded on the World Conference in, in 98 in Montpellier, before we had the conference in Acapulco in, in 94, which was a, also a very uh, interesting experience. But the, the decisive step was uh, the change from ISSS, International Social Society, to International Union of Social Sciences. When we had this, uh, uh, had this accomplished, I said we need uh, to to reorganize re scientifically IUSS because this, this organization was starting to flattering around 
in different disciplines and we need to foster cooperation between the different disciplines within soil sciences. And this was a tremendous task. This I never had personal experiences, colleagues crying in discussions because they did not want to give up their very specific mandate in different disciplines. But there was no way around that this finally could be, could be concluded in the World Conference in 2002 in Bangkok, uh, in Thailand. Now, this was something where I would say, yes, this was something which I could really achieve to change the administrative structure and the scientific structure of this organization. But something was left out, and this was the question, how can we manifest our, our presence and the importance of soil science really internationally? So, in the council meeting in 2002 in Bangkok, I proposed to create the World Soil Day. And many people were in favor of this, but the question was how to do that. So I said, uh, we can address King Bumipol, who was always related to soil because Bumipol means uh, power of the land in trans English, English translation. And we could choose maybe the 4th of December, so the birthday of Bumipol, to stimulate him, to help us. And this was unanimously accepted by the council that we tried to start forward on this basis. But it took very long time. My successor, Steve Nott, he followed it up. Erb Garonne from the Presidat University in Bangkok uh, followed it up. And in 2012, we had an audience with the king in Bangkok. This was something exceptional. Uh, he had his residence in the fifth floor of the Central Hospital of Bangkok and uh, we had to train several times how to address him. <laughs> really, this was a very special formal exercise. And to the astonishment of his staff, he spoke, spoke to us or he talked to us 55 minutes. This never had happened in before because so, he was so enthusiastic that he could tell his experiences to expel experts and to, to discuss with them, to listen to our answers or applause. So this was uh, fantastic and um, he received the, the, uh, the first medal of uh, IOSS uh, as, uh, as King of, of Thailand and uh, uh, I remember that uh, um, Stephen Nortif asked him if he could help us to come forward with this day. He said, I am not no longer in, in politics involved, but I will help you. I will do something. And obviously he addressed the Ministry of Agriculture there and the Ministry of Agriculture went to FAO, to the council, and brought this idea to FAO. Because we as a learned society had no chance to do anything for this. This was only possible for governmental or international organizations to go forward. So FAO's council um, um, uh, agreed after long discussions and it then went forward to, to, uh, to uh, uh, New York, to the UN General Assembly, and in 2013, in December, it was, I think, about December, they decided to, ex to install the World Soil Day on the 4th of December. And so this was something uh, which makes me very happy. And if I may say so, this, this experience and this audience with the King was one of the, my most exciting experiences during my professional life. This was just uh, very, very interesting. Maybe I should also uh, to say in this context that in order to help European soil science to be more visible in the European Community, European Commission, because that in 2002, 2002 was a large discussion about the soil, the European soil, uh, soil, uh, European soil thematic strategy. 
they started in 2002. And uh, I was asked at the time to, to, to chair the one of the five working groups of the Commission until 2004 when there uh, came also the idea after this uh, experience uh, to, to found to the, together with the European Landowners Organization under the auspices of the European Commission this uh, soil award, soil and environment award for practitioners. But uh, this is something aside. Uh, the, the main point in 2004 was that I had the chance to found the European Confederation of Soil Science Societies. I wanted to have an organization in Europe which is visible, which has, is an umbrella for all European soil science societies in order to gain visibility because the European Commission was distributing money for research and all kinds of things. So, uh, with this visibility, uh, the Commission also acted very quickly and the, the Commission of Forest Research um, uh, the, uh, asked me as president of the European Confederation of Soil Science Societies to uh, make contact with China and I led a delegation for the Commission in China uh, which was a very interesting experience uh, in order to prepare a, a, a memorandum of understanding between the Chinese Academy of Sciences and the European Commission to found the CENO European Panel on Land and Soil. This panel still exists, was put into uh, order in 2007 under the Commission of Protochnik. And uh, so uh, this was for me a new experience also to combine now European research agenda in soil science and land management with the Chinese. I think this is something which I can tell here in relation to my activities in the international field. So in acknowledgement of all your efforts for the soil, you have received numerous honorary membership of other organizations, numerous uh, honorary academic degrees of several universities. Um, but what are your ideas of the future? What are your views of the future and especially the views of the future of soil? That's a very important question, I think. It's not easy to answer. But if I look into the development of soil science during the last 60 years, uh, more or less 60 years, which I can oversee, uh, we, we developed very strongly in soil chemistry, uh, soil management, agricultural uh, land management and soil science. And soils were always seen as an instrument for agricultural and forestry production. Uh, it was never seen as an, a part, a complex part of nature, of terrestrial ecosystems. And the question how does this relate not only to agriculture but also to human beings, to human health. And uh, on the other side, uh, the soil science developed into more and more disciplinary and sub disciplinary areas and the contact between these areas and this is my impression today is that we are uh, really developing into a direction where the soil as a complex issue as a complex uh, medium to guarantee human and, 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 and uh, life of biota in general uh, is uh, no longer seen because we are too much concentrating on very specific issues instead to see the whole thing. And this is also at the moment visible in the discussion uh, about human substances. There are people, famous soil scientists, who say human substances don't exist. These are molecules which we can identify. Okay, of course we can identify molecules. But the question is, what does this mean for the complex, uh, the complex issue of soils? And uh, so I think we have to see 
uh, that we come again to a more concise picture of soils as a complex medium in our environment, uh, guaranteeing human and environmental life. And this is my concern at the moment. Will we be able to do that? And how can we do that? Okay, Professor Blum, thank you very much for this interview. It was my pleasure. Thank you for asking ask, ask questioning me.